All right, guys, we're going to take a look at the REC or R E C R J M 02. My good buddy Bruce sent this in. Of course, I was interested in checking it out. Any watch that has an actual piece of like an aircraft or uh, they have one with Mini Cooper parts or, you know, metal in it or a um, Porsche 911. Um, this one, of course, has uh, a, l a little bit of aluminum from a wrecked, you can see down there in that date window area there, that's an actual piece of the aircraft from a wrecked PT-879 Spitfire. So anytime a watch company is willing to add some more depth or dynamic story to the watch, um, yeah, I'm kind of interested in it. It's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about size real quick, and then we'll get into a bunch of the design features I like of the watch itself. So size real quick, it is a 40 mil watch. If you exclude these extended almost aircraft wing or propeller looking um, crown guards, if you will. So uh, it's if you add these, it's like 41.4, but I mean, really the watch case is 40. And then the lug to lug is 48.4. The thickness is only 12 mil. Um, it's it's able to be constructed fairly thin because they're using the Myota 9015, which is a uh, pretty thin movement. So it's it's nice for a lot of companies to work with that movement. They can keep the thickness of the watch uh, reduced. 20 mil lug width. Um, the lugs actually have a little bit of character to them. It's a little difficult to see them on a strap, but if they were to actually use like a fitted bracelet, you would actually see that um, there's actually a little bit of character to them. They kind of... The way they cut into the case, like right there, there's a little bit of a body line or something, if you will. Um, and then they come to a really nice sharp point. Uh, pretty much brushed all around. There's a slight polished relief there. And, of course, you have the polished relief around the top of the bezel. Um, some polishing around the ornament on the uh, crown guard. It's supposed to be like a propeller, I suppose. Even the shape of the uh, lugs coming down there, you can see, have a nice little cut to them and everything, everything. Is fitted really well. You have a uh, multi, you know, five screws holding the case back down. Uh, some information on the back there. You can see uh, pretty low water resistance, but with this style of watch, it's more of a showpiece. So, uh, slightly decorated rotor there. It's all riveted up like it's almost like an on a you know aircraft body. So that's pretty cool. And then even below the display crystal, you have some more information. The PT eight seven nine. Um, and then the serial number there, I believe, and then the RJM, which is the founders of the company. So um, pretty cool, a lot of depth and character. Everywhere you look, there's something going on with this watch. So you can see there's even more information on the dial. It is a sandwich dial around the perimeter, and then, well, the cutout for the date window. So and then you have your left and your right. You have your hour and your skeletonized um, minute hand, red tipped seconds hand, a lot going on with this watch and I think it looks really good. I think pretty much if you go, just go visit their site, it's pretty cool. Some of the watches they are producing, they have a really nice look to them. Really nice uh, buckle hardware here. Uh, even the leather is of high quality um, as far as it's fit and finish. Quick release, spring bars on there. I'm wearing of course the uh, Bling Master, but I'm gonna pop this guy on wrist. The price they have listed on the website is $1,295. So, and I know a lot of people are probably going to scoff at that because of the Myota movement and everything, but really this thing is perfect size and it has a heck of a story to it. Um, you know, I'm sure there might be some naysayers out there. Yeah, I can put some scrap metal in a watch, but uh, it's a little more in depth than that. I mean, they actually authenticate and use actual bits of what they're saying they're using and they have the whole storyline to it and everything so um it's you know it's legit it's it's a pretty sweet watch and it feels great on wrist so and you know there might be some naysayers in the myota movement but uh, i've had nothing but good luck with that particular movement um, so th thanks for watching guys big thanks to bruce for sending this guy in i'm glad i got to take a little visit with it and I'll see you guys on the next video. Uh, loom shot. I almost always forget the loom shot, right? So there is loom on this.
I forget the formula. It's not crazy bright and it's not going to last amazingly long, but there is loom in there. And that's always nice to see on a sandwich dial. And then that skeletonized minute hand is actually pretty cool the way it uh, looms up. So there certainly is loom. It is there. You will not be disappointed. Uh, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Probably thought I was really done that time. But I forgot to mention, although this is only three Atmos um, water resist, this has a screw down crown. It has an amazing pop to it. The other thing I noticed, it has um, a fairly th you know thin tube and everything like that. But for how thin the assembly looks down in that area, this thing has like no crown wobble. It is the most solid feeling crown in stem assembly I have felt in uh, a watch of like this design, the way the the way it works. So. Um, and I've, it, anyway, it seems like lately I've been uh, noticing some brands where they have a little play in them, which is fine. It's acceptable. But this is reassuring to know that there is ways to make these solid. And these guys made it solid. So I just thought it was worth sharing with you guys. All right. Now this time I'm really gone.